Valmiki Ramayana in English episode 32 chapter 36 the story of the king of Himalayas younger daughter Uma hearing the wonderful narrative so eloquently related by Sri Vishwamitra both the princes praised the holy sage and said O divine sage you have told us a tale by the hearing of which great merit is acquired be gracious enough to enlighten us further regarding the elder daughter of the king of Himalay. You are omniscient, therefore describe to us fully how the Ganga, the world purifying stream, came down from heaven to earth. O you, versed in the science of Dharma, why is this sacred river called Triptha, the traverser of the three worlds, and whence is this name derived? Seated amidst the other sages, Sri Vishwamitra, whose only wealth was truth and austerity, spoke as follows in answer to Sri Rama's questioning, O Prince, in ancient times, the holy Lord Mahadev was wedded to Parvati and being charmed with her beauty devoted himself to the delights of connubial bliss. According to the measure of time of the gods, the Lord Mahadev passed a hundred years with that Devi but remained without issue. In their anxiety, the gods approached Sri Brahma and said, Who will be able to endure the power and glory of the offspring produced by these two mighty beings? They then took refuge with Sri Mahadev, saying, O God of Gods, O Mahadev, ever engaged in doing good to all beings, we offer salutations to you, be gracious unto us. Your power, O first among the gods, none can endure. Therefore, with this goddess engage in yogic penances. For the welfare of the three worlds, retain thine energy within your body so that the universe may be preserved and may not suffer destruction. Dot. The ruler of the world, Sri Mahadev, listened to the words of the Devas and said, Be it so, O Devas, I will restrain my power so that all the regions including the earth may dwell in peace. But O Devas, should my vital fluid overflow, who shall receive it? The gods answered Sri Mahadev, saying, Let the earth receive it. Then Sri Mahadev let fall his seed on the earth covering the mountains, seas and forests. When the earth could bear no more, the devas asked the wind and fire deities to combine with that creative power and thus was a white mountain created and later a heavenly forest as resplendent as the light of the sun. From this fiery light was born the glorious Swami Kartike. All the gods and rishis were full of joy and adored the Lord Shiva and the goddess Uma. As they worshipped them with grateful hearts, Uma was filled with wrath and said, O Devas, your action has filled me with displeasure, you shall not escape the consequences. Then Uma shining like the sun, took water in the palm of her hand and pronounced a curse on the gods, saying, O Devas, you have prevented me from bearing a son, may you be childless from this day, may your wives be without progeny. Still not appeased, Uma cursed the earth also and said, O earth, you shalt never remain in one form, you shalt have many masters. O witless one, you shalt never bear a son, since you have prevented me from becoming a mother. Sri Mahadev, seeing the devas discomfited, prepared to depart to the northern region of the Himalayas. There, on a peak named Himamvatrabhava, he engaged in prolonged yogic practices together with Uma. O Rama, I have told you of one of the two daughters of the Himalayas. Now with Lakshmana, listen to the tale of the other daughter of Himalay named Ganga. O. Chapter 37 The King's Elder Daughter Ganga whilst Sri Mahadev was engaged in yogic meditation, the Devas, under the leadership of Agni, went to the region of Brahma where, with Indra, they paid reverence to the Lord of the world and said, O Lord, at the beginning of creation you did sent make Sri Mahadev our leader, but he has now retired to the Himalayas and is engaged in the practice of austerity with Uma. O you who art desirous of the good of the world, do what you considerest ought to be done, you are our only refuge. Then Sri Brahma encouraged the Devas, 
with gentle words saying o devas the curse of uma devi that you should remain without of spring is irrevocable but the fire god agni will cause ganga to bear a son who will destroy the enemies of the gods the youngest daughter of haimankala uma will look upon her sister's son as her own and will inevitably lavish her affection on him o rama the words of shri brahma filled the gods with satisfaction and they offered obeisance to him then they all circumambulated mount kailasha the repository of precious metals and begged agni to beget a son agni acquiesced in their request and approaching shri ganga said o devi let us beget a son for it is the wish of the gods assuming the form of a celestial nymph ganga inspired the fire god to plant his seed in her her every vein being filled with splendor after a time she addressed agni saying o deva i am unable to bear the ever increasing splendor which you have communicated to me my body is burning like fire my mind is agitated and i am filled with fear agni replied o sinless one place this fetus near the himalayas then ganga devi expelled the resplendent being shining like gold this substance falling on the earth became the purest gold that can be found all objects in its proximity became silver and the more distant areas exposed to its penetrating rays became copper the baser parts becoming zinc and lead in this way its brilliance was transmuted into metals and spread abroad and the mountains and forests nearby were changed to gold o rama gold being produced in that dazzling form is called jatrupa form bomb and o hero that is why gold shines like fire the grass the creepers the shrubs all were converted into gold and from that splendor was born kumara the devas with indra engaged the kritikas to nurse the child and they regarded him as their own son the gods named the child kartike and said he shall be our son and he will be renowned in the three worlds the kritikas bade the child and as he grew his form resembled the fire because the infant was born prematurely the devas called him skanda the nurses began to nourish the child with milk and he shone like a flame with six mouths he sucked the milk of six nurses at the same time soon he grew so powerful that while yet an infant he challenged groups of demons to combat then all the gods appointed him their commander in chief the devas and agni paid affectionate homage to this child o rama this is the inspiring and merit bestowing story of shri ganga and kartike o raghava on this earth those who read this narrative with faith and devotion shall have long lives sons and grandsons and obtain the divine region of skanda chapter 38 the story of king sagra shri rama's ancestor shri vishwamitra in gentle accents related this story to shri ramakandra and then again addressed him saying in ancient times there lived a king named sagra who ruled in ayodhya He was brave and virtuous and a lover of his subjects yet he was without issue The name of his chief queen was Keshini a daughter of king Vidarbha she was virtuous and truthful His second queen was Sumati a daughter of Arishtnemi and she was comely and charming The king went to the Himalayas and engaged in severe yogic practices in the forest of Bhrigyuprasravana When he had completed a hundred years ascetic practices the ever truthful Marharishi Bhrigu was pleased with him and favored him with a boon He said O sinless king you shall beget many sons and your fame will be immeasurable From one of your queens shall be born one son and from the other 60000 sons When the queens heard of the boon granted by the rishi they approached him saying o knower of god we are certain that your boon will bear fruit please tell us therefore which of us will beget one son and which 60000 hearing their words the highly virtuous bhrigu said 
that depends on your desires. Tell me, which of you would fain be the mother of the founder of the dynasty and which desires to beget 60,000 illustrious sons? O Rama, Queen Keshini desired to be favored by one son only. But Sumati, the sister of Garuda obtained the boon of bearing 60,000 powerful and illustrious sons. O Prince, the king offered salutations to the Rishi Bhrigu and with his consorts returned to the capital. When the time was ripe, the chief queen Keshini gave birth to a son who was called Asmanjasa. O Great One, a gourd was brought forth by Queen Sumati from which, when opened, 60,000 male infants emerged. The nurses placed them in jars full of butter and tended them. After a long time they attained to the state of adolescence and then grew to manhood. O Rama, the eldest son of King Sagra, Asmanjasa used to seize hold of children and throw them into the river Sarai. When he saw them drowning, he rejoiced. This evil doer grew up to oppress the good by his conduct. The citizens of King Sagra's capital exiled the prince, thus passing judgment on him. Asmanjasa became the father of a valiant prince named Anshuman, who was esteemed by everyone and addressed every man with courtesy. After a long time, King Sagra resolved to perform a sacrifice. O Rama, the king summoning the high priests began the initiatory rites. O. Chapter 39 The horse with which Sagra performs a sacrifice is stolen having listened to this tale, Shri Rama addressed the Muni Vishwamitra, who resembled the fire in splendor, and said, O wise one, may prosperity constantly attend you. I desire to hear how my ancestor King Sagra performed the sacrifice. Shri Vishwamitra, highly gratified by Shri Rama's eager inquiry, smilingly replied, Listen, O Rama, to the history of the high souled King Sagra. There is a country between the Himalayas and the Vindhya mountains, and it was there that King Sagra performed his sacrifice. That land is suitable for this purpose, O great prince. The great archer and warrior Anshuman was appointed the protector of the horse released for the sacrifice. A Rakshasa in disguise stole the horse and when it was being borne away, the priests approached the king, crying, See, someone is carrying off the horse, kill the thief and restore it. The king called for his 60,000 sons and said, a wicked demon has stolen the sacrificial steed, in what direction has he borne it away? It has been consecrated by mantrams to avoid obstructions, seek the horse, my sons, and may success attend you. Scour the earth surrounded by the seas, and excavate the earth at my command till the sacred horse is found. Having taken the initiation, I cannot leave this place. Go you, my sons, to shall remain here with Anshuman and the Brahmins. O Rama, commanded by their father. Those powerful princes joyfully started in search of the horse. O great one, one they ranged the world in vain and began to dig the ground with their nails which were as sharp as diamonds. O prince of the house of Raghu, they used plows, spades, and other implements to excavate the ground and the earth shook with the sound. While ploughing up the earth, many snakes, demons and powerful titans were slain and injured. O oh. O oh, Raghava, those mighty princes pierced the earth to the depth of 60,000 miles and reached the antipodes. Having pierced the earth with its mountains, they searched for the horse in Jambudvipa. The Devas, Gandharvas, Asuras and Nagas became agitated and approached Sri Brahma, bowing before him with their minds afflicted and in great distress. They said, O blessed Lord, the sons of the Maharaja Sagra are digging up the whole earth and they have brought about the death of many great beings. Whosoever opposes them is slain with the words, You are a thief, you have stolen the sacrificial horse, dog. O. 
Chapter 40 Sagras Sons Search for the Horse The Grand Sire Shri Brahma, hearing the words of the gods regarding the sons of King Sagra, who were already doomed, said, O Devas, this whole world belongs to the glorious Vasudeva and he, in the form of the sage Kapila, supports it. These princes will fall victims to the wrath of holy Kapila, the earth is eternal and cannot be destroyed. The gods, hearing these words, returned to their own regions, full of joy. Meanwhile, the uproar caused by the sons of Sagra digging the earth resembled the crash of thunder. Having encompassed the whole world, they returned to their father and said, We have traversed the whole world and have slain gods, demons and snakes, but we have found no trace of the sacrificial horse nor of the thief. O oh Father, may prosperity attend you. Be pleased to reflect on the matter and give us further instructions. The great monarch replied in anger, Go, dig the earth once more, capture the horse, accomplish your purpose, then return. In accordance with the command of their royal sire, the princes once more renewed their tunnying and came upon the monstrous form of a great elephant which resembled a mountain. O Prince of Raghu, the whole earth and the mountains of that quarter are supported by that elephant Vimpaksha, and whenever, from fatigue, he moves his feet to ease himself, the whole world trembles and quakes. The princes bowed down to him and circumambulated him. They then continued digging deeper and deeper, first to the east, then to the west. To the south they saw the second great elephant whose name was Mahapadma. They beheld him supporting that quarter of the earth and were astonished, they offered him salutations. O Prince, the sons of King Sagra next dug the northern quarter of the earth and saw there a white elephant which resembled a heap of snow. His name was Hima Pandara and his form was gigantic. They worshipped him as he stood supporting that quarter of the earth. Then with furious zeal, those mighty and valiant sons of Sagra dug the earth and proceeded to that renowned quarter where they saw Kapila the eternal Lord Vasudeva and the horse grazing near him. O Rama, they were glad, thinking that it was Shri Kapila who had stolen the horse. Full of wrath, seizing ploughs, trees, rocks and stones, they ran towards him, crying, You are the stealer of the sacrificial horse, you are the thief. O wicked one, we, the sons of King Sagra, have found you. O Rama, Shri Kapila, hearing these words, filled with rage, uttered the sound HM and instantly by his immeasurable power all the sons of Sagra were reduced to ashes. O 